Right, Andy here with an update. This is now day four complete. So that's the fourth implantation that I've had. I'm not leaving the room today. I wasn't able to leave the room yesterday either. I don't want to stray too far from the bathroom. Now that might sound like a terrible thing. However, in my life, you'd be amazed. It's almost like light relief, quite literally. Um, so I've got to basically stay here. Um, thank goodness for Netflix and YouTube and the nut brigade who keep emailing me. Yeah, okay, we'll say no more about that. It's almost I just keep antagonizing them just by mentioning them once. Anyway, so now some questions that are coming through. Um, people are asking, okay, where am I? And can they book in to the same place? Now, I understand people's need to know that. And I also understand the desperation that people have in dealing with whatever chronic health problems. I totally get it. However, it must be your first day on the internet. I'm not going to tell you where I am. And I'm not going to tell you my room number. I mean, come on, people. Anyway, so when I get home, I will put up the details of the clinic that I'm at. So for those who are in the, basically, Europe, you'll be able to find your way here. Now, other questions coming through. Um, the most common one is, will um, FNT, fecal microbiota transplantation, will that work for my particular condition? As in their condition, not mine. I don't know. I don't even know if it's going to work for my condition. Um, I, I'm somebody who has looked up an awful lot of data, re proper research data. I'm not talking like YouTube and Facebook research. And I'm fairly satisfied that there's a high probability that this can help me. Um, I'm not an expert on anything. And there's no way an email that just gives me one or two lines about your health condition with a request, do you think this will help me? I cannot possibly know. How can I possibly know? This is something you'd have to actually discuss with whatever clinic. Now, the next one is people are asking me for opinions on particular clinics. Again, I don't know. I've come to this one. I'm not an expert on clinics. I haven't done the grand uh, fecal microbiota transplantation clinic tour, and I don't intend to. So I'm sorry, but I know I understand the desperation, but I cannot help you with that those kind of questions. But I will advise you again, um, be, be aware of the forums where these things get discussed. The Nuts Brigade is very, very strong. And so you may want to take some leads from the forums, but actually do direct conversation with the clinics, as I did with this one. I found this one to be particularly helpful. The only ad advice I would give, really, in choosing a clinic, please check the qualifications of the people in the clinic. If they don't want to give it to you, there's a red flag right there. If they are using the illusion of qualification, as I mentioned in a previous video, so they're actually chiropractors or life coaches, that should raise some red flags for you. In certain countries, there is massive restrictions on what FMT is licensed for especially in the UK, which means that healthcare professionals who are registered, that means doctors, nurses, and, and the ilk, they're not allowed to do this um, unless it's for very specific medical criteria. And mostly that just is C. difficile infection. And in some instances, autis autism or autistic spectrum disorders, and that's usually under research protocols only. Um, when I was having a look around at who's actually doing that in the UK, they're mostly university hospitals. So these are gastroenterology, gastroenterological teams in conjunction with various other groups as well within the medical field. So just be aware, these are the things you, you ought to be looking at. Now, other questions come through. Um, am I noticing any effects yet? Well, the most noticeable effect is the sense of smell has come back. Now, that could be coincidence. I'm not going to pretend for one second there's a causal link there. That could just be coincidence. I mean, after all, I had COVID for 15 months. I've been free of it now for quite a while. It was inevitable that my sense of smell was going to come back at some point. So that could just be coincidence. Is this a cure for long COVID? Because I've referenced COVID in previous videos, a lot of questions coming through. I've got long COVID. Will this help me? I, <laughs> I doubt it. I've got to be honest. But what do I know? Um, I'm not an expert. I haven't done any research on long COVID and, and FMTs. I don't know. So again, I appreciate the desperation, but I can't answer that. And then the other questions coming through around diet and dietary changes. Now, up until this point in my life, for quite a few years now, I've been very, very restricted on what I'm able to eat. I was interested when I came across Jordan Peterson's thing about only eating beef and his daughter, Michaela Peterson. 
And that was largely because he had lots of food intolerances and life was unbearable. Now, I think living purely off cow is probably um, a little bit extreme, but I totally understand it because my own particular, my own personal diet has been massively, massively restricted. And so I've, have I tried any diets? Yeah, I've pretty much reduced it down to just basically plain rice and, and fresh meat. That's pretty, and some greens. That's all I've been able to eat. Now, it's still early days. I'm only on day four of a 10-day treatment protocol, and results aren't normally experienced immediately. So am I, have I got a better diet? Do I have improvements there? I have no way of knowing yet. Again, appreciate the questions. So I think that's all for now. Just one last point. An awful lot of people are either commenting on various forums or on the YouTube videos or emailing me medical advice. You don't need to do that, really. Take this as read. My, I have a background in nursing. I worked in accident and emergency and neurosurgery, amongst other areas. I have worked in mental health for a lot of years too, and I was an occupational health advisor for five, five or six years. I'm pretty well versed in proper, I mean, real research, not Facebook, and I'm very familiar with medical processes and so forth. I have a lot of acquaintances, colleagues, and friends who are either nurses, doctors, or whatever. So I'm pretty up on, on stuff. Um, some people are, are writing, well, don't you know how dangerous FMT is? I'm not doing it myself. <laughs> I'm not plucking some some strangers plucked off the street. Here, poop in this pot. No, this is a medical thing. So I think that's all for now. Um, I appreciate everyone's input. This um, subject matter got a lot more interest than I was anticipating. And I thank you all for your encouragement too. I will give you another update tomorrow.